So what does it mean to prepare data for a machine learning model? Well, it's all about using domain and data knowledge to get the data into a numerical format based on the raw data that was provided. So raw data, we already know that can be a composition of numerical data, categorical data, text data, and potentially even image data. And for a machine learning model, we generally need to provide numerical features. So when we have this data and it's not in numerical format already, we do need to prepare the data before we can actually serve it up to the machine learning model to perform training. And a bit of a caveat here, which just states that there is no single way to pre-process data. It will always depend on the problem, the algorithm that we want to use, the data itself, and as I already mentioned, the intended algorithm and the algorithm choice. A couple of example data preparation techniques here on this slide. It's all about encoding data, standardizing data, filling in the missing values, potentially upsampling data if we observe that there is an imbalance in our exploratory data analysis stage. And then we have highlighted a couple of techniques that would specifically apply for fairness intervention, and that could be related to privacy preservation, such as redacting or coarsening the data. It could be regarding the names of the features. And then again, coming back to more general machine learning data preparation, we could also look at correlations and potentially combine features or reduce the number of features overall if we do have correlated features in our data set. A quick look at what it means to redact data or make data more coarse. And as I said, this is going to be related to one of the dimensions of responsive AI that we had a look at yesterday, which was privacy preservation and security. So a combination of features can actually enable re-identification of individuals if it's too specific. If there's only one person in your data record that has a specific age in a particular zip code with health records, well then that one individual could potentially be re-identified. And what we want to do to prevent that from happening is we want to redact or coarsen the data. So that means we want to aggregate the information so there's not one single individual that can be uniquely identified in the data set. And as a side fact here, the combination of zip code, sex, and birthday can actually uniquely identify approximately 87% of the US population. So if you have those three features in your data set, you can actually re-identify 87% of the US population. So clearly what we want to do is we want to bring that data up to a coarser level and have fewer unique individuals in the data set. And that really brings us to what is called K-anonymity, which determines the level of protection or the re-identification granularity. So if we want a 2K anonymity, it means that there are two individuals in any given bracket. And the example that we have here on this slide is a fictional healthcare data set where we have a couple of individuals given their name, age, sex, zip code, and then the diagnosis, a uh, healthcare outcome that was given to them. And as you can see here, each individual can actually be uniquely identified if you had the age, sex, and zip code information. So what we want to do instead is, first of all, we want to remove the names of the individuals, and then instead of using unique age values, we can actually put them in buckets. So here you can see now, instead of using the age 61, we're using a bucket 60 to 70. And then for the zip code, we're removing some of the digits to once again ensure that there's not one single individual that can be uniquely identified just based on the zip code. So this is now two-way anonymized. Coming back to the main problem or the main issue at hand of we need to convert all of the data that we have into a numerical format. This is what brings us to encoding of the categorical features. And categorical features are also called discrete features. And we have examples here for categorical features. So you could have an employment column with stating the information on whether or not somebody is employed as false and true. Or we could even have age groups in the data itself, where we have individuals in different age buckets. 
And as I said, most machine learning models do actually require converting to numerical format first. So we do need to deal with that data. So we need to encode or define a mapping on how we can get from these different categories to numerical values. And the initial idea would be to just assign numbers to the categories. But careful here, depending on the type of categorical feature, and we have to distinguish here between the so-called nominals and ordinals, just assigning numbers will actually not do the trick. So if we have ordinals, meaning that the categories are indeed intrinsically ordered and we can sort them such as sizes from small to large, well then we can also assign numbers that go from a small number to a large value. However, if we have nominals, which means that there are categoricals that are unordered, such as colors, green, red, blue, then there is no natural numerical representation and we actually need to perform what is called one-hot encoding, where each instance, each color, will be assigned a column on its own, and then we indicate with one and zero whether or not that color is present in the row. So what does this look like in code? We have here the one-hot encoder, which is a scalar and transformer, and we can use one-hot encoder to convert categorical features into what are called dummy or indicator features and we have both the fit and transform method. One little caveat here is that the one-hot encoder does not automatically name the new features. So if we have a column here like color and we want to create one separate column per color and then indicate with ones and zeros whether or not the color is present in the row, then we need to rename those columns as well. So we have the code example here. So from sklearn preprocessing, importing the one-hot encoder, and then we're going to apply the one-hot encoder to our color column. And as we can see in the bottom right, the result is now going to be zeros and ones. And this is going to be alphabetically ordered. So the first column with the header zero is going to refer to is blue, yes or no. Second column will be is green, yes or no. And then the third column is red, yes or no. So we can see that the ones correctly indicate where blue red and green used to be in the original raw data. Next, we're going to have a look at the ordinal encoder, which follows the same logic as to what we've seen before. We have the ordinal encoder transformer from sklearn. We're loading it in, and then we're applying the column that we want to transform. And keep in mind with the ordinal encoder, the individual instances in any given column now have intrinsic order. So we're not going to generate new columns, we're going to keep one column, but assign numerical values based on size. And careful here, if we don't provide a custom encoding, it's going to sort it alphabetically. So here we're going to use small, medium and large. And you can see here we did actually provide uh, encoding, putting small first, medium in the middle and large third. So we are going to get the encoding that we wanted and we can see it represented as 0, 1 and 2 in the table on the bottom right hand side of the slide. Now we're going to have a look at feature scaling. So this is what we need to do to deal with our numerical features and to give a little bit of background and motivation as to why we want to do that. We can see here that many algorithms actually are quite sensitive to features being on different scales. And this actually applies to both metric-based algorithms or distance-based algorithms such as KNN and K-means, but also gradient descent-based algorithms such as linear regressions or neural networks, which are composed of many regressions that are being combined. As a small side note here, tree-based algorithms such as decision trees or random forests actually do not have this issue and we don't need to scale features for those. However, my recommendation is to scale, to err on the safe side because you might be swapping out algorithms at some point in the iterative process of building a model and then it makes sense to have everything already scaled and in place before you do that. So what is the solution here? What do we need to do? Well, we need to bring the features to the same scale and there exist many different scaling methods. You can see a couple of examples here with the mean and variance standardization or standard scalar or the min-max scaling method. 
And once again, we can use a scalar. A scalar already has a transformer for a standard scalar implemented and to give you the equation as to what the standard scalar is actually doing here. First, it will identify the mean of any given column. Then it will also identify the standard deviation. And then to actually perform the transformation, you're going to have each value subtract the mean and then divide by the standard deviation. In terms of code, we're going to initialize the standard scalar. We then have a sample data set of numerical values. And then we're going to apply both fit and transform in one go. And just to help you distinguish a little bit as to what's happening and what's the difference between fit and transform. Well, in the fit stage, we're going to identify what the mean and the standard deviation are for every given column that we want to scale ultimately. And then the transformation stage is actually performing the transformation. And this is going to be very important because when we apply these transformations, we usually want to run the fit on the training data, but then transform on training test and validation data set. The min-max scalar, we have it here. Here, the transformation is going to be to identify the minimum and the maximum value for any given column. And then we're going to subtract the min from any given value and divide by the difference between max and min. And here, once again, you can see we're initializing min-max scalar and then applying fit and transform in one go to perform our scaling. And this now brings us to the data preparation notebook. In this notebook, we will show how to prepare data for a machine learning model ingestion, so transforming everything to numerical values. And we're also going to have a brief look at missing values and feature selection. And we're going to see a mix of data types, so there will be both numerical and categorical data in the data set that we're going to use for this example.